visiting my old friend Carrie Fisher, known to the world as Princess Leia in the Star Wars movies. But she's always been, she's on the edge of sanity. She's, um, you know, constantly not, not mad enough to be committed, but not sane enough to, to lead much of a normal life. Galloping along at a great speed, it is better than any drug that you could ever take. God, if you will, is saving you parking spots. Songs are being played on the radio for you. You're just so enthusiastic about everyone. And everyone must be enthusiastic about you. And it's just come along. I've got a great idea. I've got this unbelievable idea. Let's go to India. <laughs> exactly. Then you'll just start going way too fast. Yeah. And you're faster than anyone that you're around. And that's not fun. You're on the phone far too long. You're not getting any sleep. Nothing is going fast enough for you. Come on, keep up with me, you guys, come on. And even if it's not true that you're um, more talented when you're manic, you feel like you are. Yeah, which is and half so the battle. I am standing on rocks, claiming speeches to the world. You know, I have a lot to say. I have messages from deep space, in fact. And I stayed awake for six days, and I, I did lose my mind. And this friend of mine says to me, does your doctor know that you behave this way? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> then we sort of have an argument, and I cry for four hours, and I'm unable to stop. And I know there's something wrong with that. I call this doctor, and I go in, and I see her. You know, we're talking, and I'm laughing, and I'm spinning around in chairs. And the doctor says... That's, that's the diagnosis. That's bipolar. That's manic depression. Carrie had years of living with such extreme moods and feelings before she got that diagnosis. She's got it bad, you know. It's not a rock star, film star uh, accessory. It's a, it's a real mental condition that she has to live with every single day of her life. She's on medication. You, you have to picture what she'd be like if she weren't. Can you press the button, Stephen? Very oh. sorry. <laughs> then, uh... <laughs> Good point. A walking man in Los Angeles. Good to see you, mate. Hi, bud. How are you? I'm <laughs> very well, thank welcome, you. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Oh. You know they stare and point at people that walk out here. I was thought I was going to be arrested at any moment. I wonder whether you felt this sense of being in a cycle of bipolarity, in which people swing into a state of mania. The symptoms are that you can't sleep and that you are silly, and some people literally take their clothes off and dance on tables. See, people I didn't, tidy I didn't the have, houses. I didn't have that. I was just diagnosed as being dead upset. So it was depression, though, that? <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't, no. He hasn't got manic depression, he's just dead upset. <laughs> Most people who've seen, you know, footage of you in a tour or something uh -huh. would say that you are, you do have up phases, that you are one of the most up, manically up, cheerful, to the point of being you know, silly and larky. But that's, you know, that's that's a persona. It's just like any right. character that you would, and you, you would act out. I think my first dr drug of choice, if you like, was probably fantasy. Fantasizing about being an actor or being a singer, going to the moon or whatever. And I don't know if that was to, dis to escape a depression. I was just sad that my career obviously went like that yeah. and my self-esteem and my depression went like that. With me, um, how my depression manifested itself was that I'd stop going out. I lost the cog to socialise. Oh. 
Having said that, I could get up in front of 35,000, 40,000 people and go, look at me, I'm ace. Yeah. And then as soon as I get off stage again, I'd, I'd, be, I'd get in the, the tour coach and go back to my bedroom and, and pull the, the duvet over my eyes. I knew Robbie quite well in that period after he left Take That, when how he dealt with his depression was the classic method of alcohol and drugs. Now he's clearly found the cure for his moods. Coke gave me a twitch, and drink just made me ill. So all the props that I had had to be removed, just had to be. There was like 13 months without me drinking or taking a drug, and I felt worse than when I was drinking and taking drugs. It was horrible. And then I thought, well, that's madness. Let's go and try these pill things that people have been yeah. talking about. Then took antidepressants after 13 months and went, I'm all right now. <laughs> so I don't need to come back. And I, I haven't been back since, really. Time, 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 Gene. To be manic depressive doesn't mean, as many people think, that you're just really, really depressed. <laughs> Robbie and I clearly have depression in common, but the difference between us is that he's manic only as a performer. I'm manic in real life, and it's a difference that I now know is crucial to a correct diagnosis. 